Looks like faulty studies and misleading news on artificial sweeteners are never going to stop, so neither are we. That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. So first, the basics. Whenever you see a new scary study claiming that a single food ingredient has a specific link to a specific health outcome, you should immediately feel wary. That's because it is nearly impossible to conduct a study that provides solid evidence in support of such a claim. Nutrition research is hard, but rather than accepting that and working around it, we somehow keep producing studies with the same pitfalls that end up causing the same panics for no real reason. More often than not, these studies use unreliable measures of consumption, and they are correlational, which always seems to be forgotten in the media flurries. And those are just two of so many pitfalls in nutrition research. Which brings us to today's study. Published this year in the journal Nutrients, it examined records of diet beverage consumption during pregnancy and or breastfeeding for 235 mothers of offspring with autism spectrum disorder and 121 mothers of neurotypically developing offspring. They found that early diet soda consumption or equivalent aspartame consumption was three times as likely for mothers of male offspring with autism or said another way, mothers of males with autism were, according to these previously collective data, three times as likely to have consumed aspartame during pregnancy and or breastfeeding. That sounds scary, but before you go dumping the Diet Coke, hear me out on why I don't think this is actually that alarming. Self-reports of food intake are notoriously unreliable. Asking women what they consume daily and how much of it when they were pregnant is just silly especially considering that some of the women in the study had children who had already grown into adulthood. Imagine trying to recall what you ate in this kind of detail more than 18 years ago. Another issue is that some of the children with autism had a sibling without it participating as a control. That means one mother was providing data for both conditions, which isn't great study design. They also didn't control for other critical factors like smoking during pregnancy and parental age, both of which have been associated with autism and offspring. And you know we can't leave this episode without hammering on correlation versus causation. For starters, we have no idea what else mothers who consumed aspartame may have had in common. Entirely possible that their diets differed in other significant ways that affected the health outcomes of their offspring. And secondly, conditions like maternal obesity have also been linked to the development of autism and offspring. What if these mothers were overweight and drinking diet soda for that reason, and the diet soda has nothing to do with the autism, but the obesity does? The answer to these questions would all be good to know, but we don't know them. So we shouldn't be waving these results around without some serious context. We should definitely continue researching potential contributors to the development of autism. But we should also recognize that these kinds of studies aren't getting us closer to an answer. While autism is currently thought to be caused by a complicated interaction of genetics and environment, the data for genetics is much stronger, and we'll never figure out the role of environmental factors by wasting our time on pushing out more studies with the same old flaws. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on artificial sweeteners and heart health. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel down below, and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, Joe Sivitz and Edward Lillaholm, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.